Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue our discussion on two dimensional incompressible navier stokes equations in the previous lecture we had looked at some of the introductory concepts of incompressible navier stokes equations in two dimensions we discussed about the governing partial differential equations involving mass conservation and momentum conservation we discussed about two possible ways of formulating the problems the primitive variable formulation and the stream function vorticity formulation and we also discussed about the idea that in incompressible navier stokes equation apparently pressure and velocity is decoupled from each other so we have to keep an eye so that they communicate with each other giving us consistent solutions of both velocity and pressure fields so keeping all these points in mind and also remembering that the governing partial differential equations can be applied or represented by different means they could be shown in conservative or non conservative formulation they can be shown in dimensional or non dimensional formulation we will now start discussing the vorticity stream function formulation to begin with and at each and every step we should recollect all that we have discussed in the previous lecture so that we can identify the equations in their respective forms so we discussed earlier that primitive variable formulation formulation involves pressure and velocity with which we can physically associate it associate very easily however there could be derived parameters which are dependent on either velocity or pressure but which are not so easily physically decipherable so stream function and vorticity are concepts of that kind so let us see what vorticity is about so we have written an expression for the vorticity vector which is curl of the velocity field and in two dimensional flows the curl of the velocity field would basically generate one component and that happens to be the z component because curl the cross product will give rise to a vector pointing normal to a certain plane therefore if you are talking about the xy plane in a two dimensional flow problem then the plane or or the direction which is normal to that plane is essentially the z direction so we have the vorticity component along the z direction available as the only component in two dimensional flow and that is given by del v del x minus del u del y so this is the vorticity part of the formulation and then you have the stream function which is defined here so we are connecting the two components of velocity in two dimensional flow field by connecting it with gradient of a function psi which is stream function so we may recollect about the concept of stream tubes in two dimensional flow fields we remember that there cannot ever be flow occurring across stream tubes so if you have say stream lines drawn like this so you would consider regions between two stream lines as the stream tubes and you can only allow flow through the stream tube regions but no flow can cross over so these are 
basic concepts from fluid dynamics which we are aware of. So, this is not possible and we can show that the velocities, the velocity components are connected with the gradient of the stream function using these two equations. Without going into the fundamental derivations, we will accept these definitions for vorticity and stream function and proceed with their application in formulating the vorticity stream function uh, approach in solving incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. So, the first step is we try to take a del del y of the x momentum equation. You can see that we have actually used the dimensional form of the Navier-Stokes equations and once we take the y derivative of the x momentum equation, we would be able to generate this equation. Similarly, we take the partial derivative with respect to x of the y momentum equation and then we are able to generate the second equation. When we subtract the above two equations, now how do we subtract? We have to look at this term to figure out what we have subtracted from which. So, del u del y comes first and del u del y of course, you can understand lies here. That means, we have subtracted the second equation from the first in order to generate this collection of terms. right? So, why have we done it? Of course, subtraction has been done so that we can actually get it associated with the vorticity, because vorticity involves subtraction of velocity derivatives. Again, remember the vorticity equation here involves velocity derivatives along orthogonal directions. It is not del v del y which figures in continuity equation, but it is del v del x. x is orthogonal to the y direction along which the velocity is. right? So, we have to keep this in mind. So, here again we have created the del v del x term like we have here in vorticity, we have generated the del u del y term like we have in vorticity. So, we are able to bring in vorticity here by subtracting these two equations. All right. And the way we have differentiated again creates those cross derivatives. Right. So, del u del y has been created because we have taken the partial derivative of x momentum equation with respect to y that has to be remembered. Again del v del x has been generated because we have taken the partial derivative of y momentum equation with respect to the other direction x. So, these are the uh, you know the uh, details which you have to watch out for as the derivations progress. So, once we are done with this, we find that that equation which we have derived can be written in a much more compact manner like this, because each one of the terms that we generated in the last equation on the previous slide involves the vorticity. So, it is essentially a vorticity transport equation that we have derived and incidentally this is a parabolic partial differential equation. Now, we can derive another partial differential equation which involves the stream function and that partial differential equation turns out to be an elliptic partial differential equation. It is called as a stream function equation. Now, how is it obtained? It is obtained by substituting the u and v expressions in terms of the derivatives of the stream function in the vorticity expression itself. So, if you substitute the definition of v in this equation in terms of psi, the definition of u in terms of psi, then you will be able to come up with the left hand side of this equation that is involving the second derivatives of psi, because u and v are expressed in terms of the first derivative in psi if you recall. right? And that should be equal to minus omega that is how it is represented. Now, 
that means we have a system of two partial differential equations which uh, connect the vorticity and the stream function. One is a parabolic partial differential equation, another is an elliptic partial differential equation. Now, if you are to solve these equations in non-dimensional form, then of course, you can also define non-dimensional forms of vorticity and stream function, which can be represented by those omega star and psi star equations. You can check for yourself that those are non-dimensional and then the equations will look like this very much similar to the ones which are written on tom, top, but with star form. Again you can also have conservative forms of this, which you can try deriving yourself as a homework problem. Now what have we achieved by introducing these derived variables, vorticity and stream function? Now by this what we have essentially done is that the incompressible two dimensional navier stokes equations have been decoupled into one elliptic equation and one parabolic equation which can be solved sequentially all right for example if you assume a velocity field to begin with and solve the vorticity transport equation then that vorticity transport equation gives the omega distribution which can act as the source term of your stream function equation and the stream function distribution can be solved. Once you solve for the stream function distribution, from there you can decipher the new velocity field because u and v are connected with gradient of that stream function field. That new u and v assessment can now be fed back into the vorticity transport equation and then you can keep updating till you reach a steady state situation or even in time de dependent simulations this can go on recursively. So, the solution is essentially sequential and the most important thing which you must have noted is that pressure figures nowhere here. That means, you just keep solving vorticity and stream function and you just forget about pressure. Now, why is it that we can get away with the problem of pressure here? The main catch lies here that the moment you define stream function your mass conservation is satisfied per se by definition. So, you do not have to use continuity equation time and again as a tool to satisfy mass conservation. And remember that the problem was emerging because pressure should have a big say on how mass gets conserved and then if through the formulation you can automatically ensure mass conservation then you have already solved the problem at the root right. So, if you really want to know pressure is there a way of course, there is a way. So, in vorticity stream function formulation though you do not have the pressure term you can have a pressure equation devised in terms of vorticity and stream function. So, that you can actually calculate it whenever you need it. If you need to find the pressure, a separate pressure equation has to be formulated. So, the velocity field is determined initially, which can be obtained from stream function and subsequently the Poisson equation for pressure is employed to solve for the pressure field. So, we will show soon how that is actually done. So, we will try to derive the pressure Poisson equation in stream function, function vorticity form. So, here if you notice carefully we have written the x momentum equation. Now, we have chosen a conservative form and a non-dimensional form. Not that you are forced to use this alone, you can use alternative forms also and derive these equations, but here for an example we have chosen this form. It turns out to be quite efficient. So, we have chosen this form and let us go ahead and first see what are the steps. We have taken a partial derivative of this x momentum equation with respect to x now. When we were deriving the vorticity transport it was the other direction along which we were taking the partial derivative. This time it is the same direction. Okay. So, it generates this equation. Now, this equation the moment you take a, a derivative with respect to x 
in the x momentum equation it will generate a second order in pressure. So, you are actually getting closer to forming a Laplace or not a Laplace rather a Poisson equation for pressure because you have already generated one term in that Laplacian and the rest of the terms probably will go over to the other side acting as source terms forming the source term of the Poisson equation. Only thing is that we cannot afford to retain the primitive variables we have to somehow get them converted into stream function vorticity form because those are the variables which we are handling in this formulation we are not handling primitive variables right remember that vorticity and stream function fields will be first solved and then whenever you need pressure those values have to be used for solving pressure so first thing we do is we try to find out whether some of these terms can actually be equated to 0 by using the continuity requirement. So, if you look at these different terms if you can mark them as 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, you have a number of terms here second term that means 1 out of the, that second term. So, you have 2 del u del x times del u del x as the second term. So, if you extract one of them then that forms this and then you club it with fifth you get this and you can see what lies inside the bracket is divergence of v which is 0 that means this collection is actually going to be 0. Likewise term 3 one of the terms in term 3 and the term 6 can be added together and again sent to 0 again by the continuity constraint. So, that way the equation simplifies. So, you will get this form from the x component of momentum again if you follow similar steps by first taking a y derivative of the y momentum equation and finding such terms which can collectively go to 0 using the continuity constraint and so on you can finally reduce the y momentum equation with y derivative applied on it to this form. So, once we have these two forms we try to sum them up because you have these second order derivatives of pressure already figuring here which is going to take you closer to the Poisson equation right. So, if you sum them up what do you get let us try to see that. So, adding the two previous equations you will get something like this again when you get to this form a number of these terms can again be sent to 0 repeatedly using the continuity constraint. So, the right hand side of the equation now that means, this is the right hand side what do you have you have del del x operating on Laplacian of u del del y operating on Laplacian of v that means, it will generate third order derivatives mixed derivatives though. So, they can be again expanded like what we have shown over here right and then again by collecting terms of this kind can be shown to be equal to 0. That means, so many terms in the process have finally dropped out very conveniently and then we have a far compact form of the pressure equation. Only problem that still lies is that we have to replace these velocity derivatives in terms of say either vorticity or stream function which we know right. So, with a slight uh, further simplification we can show this and then we will go over to the next slide to see the final form. So, the final form as you can see over here has come up in the form of second order derivatives of psi figuring in the source term of the pressure Poisson equation. So, it is Laplacian p equal to the source terms on the right hand side. Now, remember that this is a non dimensional pressure Poisson equation. Why is it non dimensional? Because we begin by using non dimensional forms of the momentum equation right. So, therefore, the pressure equation that will come out of it will also be non dimensional it is quite obvious. So, if you want to convert it back into a dimensional form 
then you will find that it actually works this way. That means there will be a density coming in here. Now, of course, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that while using the non-dimensional forms now, you may have noticed that we are no longer putting the star quantities. When we first discussed about non-dimensional forms of the Navier-Stokes equations, we were assigning star quantities for velocity, pressure, length scales and so on. But I need to mention over here that writing the star quantities time and again so many times in so many equations become cumbersome. So, what we state is that once we introduce the non-dimensional parameters, we say further that we are not going to mention those stars anymore. You have to recognize from the form of the equation that it is a non-dimensional form and therefore, go ahead with the solution. How do you recognize that it is non-dimensional? In incompressible Navier-Stokes equation, you just have to watch for Reynolds number. If you find the Reynolds number on the right hand side, then it is the non-dimensional form. So, whether or not you see the star parameters, it does not really matter and in general, we do not continue with the star nomenclature. So, in most reference books and texts, you will see one small comment made somewhere that we will not use the stars anymore, we will drop out that and from now on, we will mean that these are all non-dimensional parameters, but without the stars. So, this is what we have done here as well. So, if you were to use the dimensional form, the solution will come out like this with an additional density term there. So, you can actually try deriving it yourself later. So, we understood that in the primitive uh, or rather the stream functional vorticity formulation, we have a parabolic partial differential equation in the form of the vorticity transport equation, uh, the stream function equation showing up as an elliptic partial differential equation. They are solved in sequence to generate compatible vorticity stream function fields and solving for pressure is not mandatory, but whenever we need solution of the pressure field, we have to devise a pressure poison equation which we just ended up doing now and then solve for pressure whenever we need it. It could be even solved at the end of the, sol uh, the entire solution procedure once, only once to show the converged pressure field by using the stream function uh, information which comes as the source term. So, uh, we will now discuss about the primitive variable formulation. So, in primitive variable formulation what happens is the that the governing equations are a mixed elliptic parabolic system of partial differential equations which cannot be solved in sequence like we had in vorticity stream function formulation. They have to be solved simultaneously and of course, the unknowns are the velocity and pressure and there is no direct link for the pressure between continuity and momentum equations. To establish a connection between the two equations, you have to do some mathematical manipulations and the first way could be that you devise a pressure Poisson equation or there is another way that we use a so called concept of artificial compressibility into the continuity equation. That means, we artificially introduce a density uh, term into the continuity equation and we asymptotically send that term to 0 at the steady state. So, that we can actually approach the entire solution procedure from a compressible flow angle. Though it is artificial, at steady state we are expected to generate amenable solution. So, most often we use pressure Poisson equation and in our course we are actually going to discuss about that approach. Pressure Poisson equation could also mean an iterative pressure velocity correction algorithm. That means, we recursively correct pressure and velocity till we reach certain convergence criteria and then we say that now pressure and velocity are compatible. So, with this compatible pressure velocity field, we will proceed to the next time step calculation. So, it may not always mean that you solve for a pressure Poisson equation to generate pressure. It may also mean this that it is equivalent to recursively correct pressure and velocity simultaneously to get compatible pressure velocity fields, 
which satisfy both continuity as well as momentum conservation requirements. Again, we note that this difficulty does not exist for compressible Navier-Stokes equation. That is because there is a linkage between continuity and momentum equations through the density, which appears in both the equations. So, the trouble has come up because the density has gone off, density is no longer of any significance and now we are left with this problem that the two equations are apparently disconnected. However, we saw that vorticity stream function approach is one possible way by which we can inherently address that problem. Now, in primitive variable formulation, let us see how we tackle the whole problem. Again, if you notice carefully, we are looking at the momentum equations which are written on top here, the x and the y momentum equations which are written on top. As you can understand, they are, they are in conservative form and they are also in non-dimensional form because you can see Reynolds number figuring out there. So, what do we do to proceed further? We have taken a x derivative over here of the x momentum equation, if you notice carefully, a partial derivative with respect to y for the y momentum equation. So, I will just mark on top that this is x momentum, this is y momentum and what we have done over here is taking a del del x of x momentum. What we have done here is del del y of y momentum and then we come up with this form which is somewhat similar to what we did even in the previous uh, approach. Collect the terms together, but in this case we often retain this collection of terms which we have comfortably sent to 0 in the pressure Poisson equation we derived for the stream function vorticity formulation. What is the reason? Because there we did not have a problem with the flow field having any mass imbalance because we have the stream function to save us all the time. The fact that stream function exists means we have never a mass error. All right. But in primitive variable formulation, there could always be a small mass residual in the continuity equation. Right. That is why we would retain this term no matter how small it is in the form of a so called dilatation term. And the objective would be that by solving the pressure Poisson equation, even if we have a very, very small dilatation existing at this point of time, say the nth time step calculation, the idea would be that at the next time step we will limit to limit the dilation to an even smaller number. So, with that objective in mind we also solve this pressure Poisson equation. So, this time derivative that you see of the dilatation actually helps us to achieve that. When we discretize that time, di uh, di uh, time derivative of the dilatation term we write it in the form of d n plus 1 minus d n by delta t say and we may find that the d n is still not equal to 0, but we impose the constraint that d n plus 1 must go to 0. So, that we can gradually kill the dil dilatation further and further till we can make the mass residual as small as we can. So, this becomes a necessity in the primitive variable formulation. So, keeping that in mind, you can see that there are lot many more terms left on the right hand side of this pressure Poisson equation, because we did not purposely send many of those terms to 0. Why? Because we retained the dilatation term purposely. Now, there are many numerical issues associated with this. Uh, this is not an appropriate place to get into such details, but we would just stop here with this uh, format of the pressure Poisson equation. Uh, next time, we are going to discuss about how we locate the different flow variables, pressure, velocity on the grid. We had talked about a collocation of variables and we also talked about staggering of variables. 
when and how we do it and if we stagger the, uh, the variables what is the advantage. So, we will talk more about this in the next lecture. Thank you.